Hi everyone, my name is Brianna. I'm here with Nurse Deck today. We are a virtual platform for nurses that is built by nurses. Um, we aim to amplify voices um, in the nursing world today. There's no subject that we um, avoid. <laughs> um, and we just are really trying to build a community of real voices here. So today we have Michelle Rhodes. Um, and Michelle, you are a registered nurse. You are an international keynote speaker, um, currently working as an executive wellness coach and an eight time author. Yes. Um, I also see you're the founder of the Color of Wellness magazine and um, the Green Roads Consulting Firm. Yeah, wear a lot of hats. <laughs> You're busy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm working on, on simmering that down a little bit. Oh, are you? <laughs> well, it, it's great. I can see the passion that, that comes out of, of doing so many things like that. But I love that you give nurses a different um, viewpoint into things that are beyond the bedside. Um, I think a lot of nurses right now are looking for other avenues they can um, pursue with nursing. So um, I think it's really important for nurses to know there's so much out there if they're getting burnt out at the bedside. Um, and I know that's something we're going to talk about um, during our, our time together. So thank you again for being here. Um, and tell us a little bit more about being an executive coach. What, what does that mean? Um, what motivated you to pursue that? <laughs> Yes. Well, it means that you coach executive executives. That's the quick answer. Um, I have done some really transformational work with executives. I have found that it's not so much the professional development. Of course, they've achieved a lot of goals on that end, but a lot of times they've left personal development out of the loop. So mm -hmm. that's where I step in. And so when I have an executive client, we're working on really personal goals and personal development. That's a, that's the quick answer. <laughs> okay, great. There's so that's... much more to that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine it's a really personalized thing. People probably come in with things that they want to work on. And then I imagine there's probably some areas where you have to hold up a mirror and, and uh, <laughs> encourage development in as well. So um, that, that's a, that's a cool feel. We'll, we're definitely going to put a pin in that and come back to it. Okay. Um, as far as wellness, I know you do a lot of um, wellness coaching within the healthcare community. Um, why do you think it's important for nurses to care about their own wellness? Ooh, great question. Well, I'll back it up to say before I really launched into uh, coaching as a whole, and the first thing that I did was a wellness coach program. That's through Well Coaches, you know, a well, mm -hmm. very, very well known coaching program. Um, but it was through that that I saw the lens of coaching to really touch every area of our lives. And so, thus, I believe wellness does the same thing. There's some people teach six facets, some people teach eight facets. Wellness is very big and an all encompassing thing, and it gives us little niches that we could work on in different parts of our lives. So uh, I think that nurses and all of us, we all can always take you to that, that mirror and take a look at ourselves and say, okay, am I, you know, where I want to be financially? Do I feel uh, mentally well, emotionally? How am I connecting with my emotions? Physically, mm -hmm. am I taking care of myself? And so many of those mm -hmm. things we just as people don't get to hone in on like we should, but even more so with for nurses. So since I'm a nurse, it just made perfect sense. Yeah. Do you feel like with nurses, there's one area that they need to work on with, you mentioned the facets, like whether it be, um, I feel like we preach one thing to our patients and then to ourselves, we're often like the lowest priority. Um, do you find that nurses have something that, that stands out for them that they need to work on more than other professions? Yeah, I would just for my personal, you know, opinion, it looks like it's either that physical and then of course we have some that really take great care of their physical wellness but the, uh if not it's that financial piece it's usually one of those two that yeah, are not really where they need to be um, when it comes to those areas of their lives yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's <laughs> so true um i know that was true for me when i was working at the bedside mm -hmm. um 
As far as nurse tech, what areas can nurse tech advocate more in to help the nursing community? Um, how do you think nurses connect? What can we do to make it easier for nurses to connect with one another? Mm. Yeah, I think the social piece, you know, I mean, I'm just giving my opinion. I really have to dig into your platform, but I do think right now, more than ever, we need that connection. So mm -hmm. whether it be even virtual, some social, social and virtual events, just to stay connected to who we are, the essence of who we are. Although mm. outside of that, we're so many things, but I think that one thing connects us all. Uh, and from there you can grow. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think two nurses are, are so busy at the bedside right now. We're missing that, like you said, that social connection at work. Like normally you, you get that from your coworkers to keep you going, but I think nurses are just so, overworked and overwhelmed right now that it's yeah it's yeah. not even a thought <laughs> right. it's, yeah, it's almost like a relief to have that social connection and i just think it's a fun way to mm. grow because yeah the, the, the second piece of that you know what's behind the social wellness is what happens later what relationships do you develop how do you grow yes. in all these ways but the initial part is hey let's get together and have some fun yeah, I think that that's very true. All kind of break the ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a time when nursing was fun. I think hopefully we will get back there when yeah. there's not so much to be done. Mm -hmm. um, nurse leaders and nurses dealing with burnout. Um, how? What do you think is the best way to approach burnout? If you're a nurse or if you're a nurse leader that's noticing your unit is is just faltering, what what things can nurses do to help with burnout? Yeah, that's such a multifaceted question, right? And a multifaceted solution. So it's mm -hmm. not just one thing. Um, I would say a, maybe a hybrid approach of some sort, you know, where people can have room to breathe. Uh, what out, What outlet does that look like for that unit? Because I know it's different for every unit as well. So you do have to take the temperature of the unit, see what mm -hmm. the unit is comprised of. What's the culture of that unit? Because I've been asked to come do certain things with certain units and we don't we do a totally different thing on another unit. Um, because of what's going on in that particular culture there. So I think mm -hmm. it has to be um, personalized in that way to the culture. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, keeping boundaries are always, is always a good yeah. thing for all of us. And how does that look? Well, how does that translate into our work? How can we make it where it's okay to have boundaries? How do mm -hmm. we make it where it's okay to have those conversations? Um, that's a really big piece because I think right now people are feeling there's no boundaries. I can't say no. If yeah. I say no, I'm fired. If I don't get, you know, and so yeah. you go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, that's very true. I think creating, like you said, a culture of feeling like it's okay to talk about it and that you're not going to get, you know, any retribution for for saying that you're struggling, you know, like you're not the weak link on your unit. Um, Absolutely. Because I bet the more people speak up, the more you feel, you know, I think a lot of times connections are built in those like quote unquote weaker moments. So when you realize you're not alone in those, um, I think that's very true. Yeah. I mean, what a better time is to be vulnerable than now. Like, yes. It's not now when. <laughs> it's never yeah. Um, and so you have exactly. to do that. And then is, are we making space for that to happen? I think right now yeah. it's just so like business as usual when it's not business as usual right now. It's exactly happening. right. Yeah. I think the worst thing that could happen is if, you know, not that I don't think COVID is ever going to go away or anytime soon, but if we return to some normalcy, not to just carry on. I mean, I think we're going to need a lot of debriefing. For um, sure. A lot of therapy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, as far as hospitals, how do you think hospitals can start motivating nurses um, or create better environments so that when these hard times hit, we're better able to withstand them? Mm. So motivation is your question? Yeah. How do you think that hospitals can can motivate nurses or create a better environment that they can thrive in um, when when times get tough? Yeah. Well, for me, it all starts with an assessment. I think that, again, right now, I feel like it's such a great divide. Are you mm. really assessed? Have you really taken the pulse? Have you really taken the temperature of your organization? Or is it just the status quo? We're just going to yeah. keep going. We're going to keep plugging away. I think when you're going to get personal and individualize your uh, your solutions, then you'll have better outcomes. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. It's different, different places have def very different um, needs. Oh yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, do you have any personal self-care tips um, for nurses um, that you'd like to share with us? That's Ooh. a big topic these days. The whole I know, I do. I just recently fallen in love with my gym. I'm on a wellness journey myself, yeah. which is why I'm so passionate because I feel like I started mine so late. So I'm like, if I can just help someone else yeah, right. <laughs> start theirs earlier, they won't have to go what I went through to get here. So mm -hmm. yeah, right now the gym, I really enjoy it. I like going before my morning starts. So I think that's just the tone for my day. Um, yeah. Being able to just, yeah, to get my endorphins up and uh -huh. feel like I've achieved something, a goal for myself. Um, I think that's important too, is keeping a goal. I think a lot of times, mm -hmm. like when I look back before I started this journey, I didn't really have a goal for my physical mm -hmm. wellness. It was just, you know what you need to do, eat right, exercise, but to what degree? So mm -hmm. I think smart goals, and we know that is always yeah. a, a thing, but it's like set up that way for a reason. And it really does, it should be a specific goal mm -hmm. I believe, when it comes to, to your wellness and specifically what part of your wellness, like those facets we talked about earlier. So right. I think people need to sit down and just really have some, spend some time with themselves and get specific, measurable, <laughs> all those things attainable, timely about all of the goals that we have for our wellness. Yeah. That's true. Instead of just like saying this arbitrary thing that exists out somewhere that you're going to go after, you have to really name it to claim it. Is that how it goes? Um. <laughs> it's true. I think we take it for yeah. granted or we're just too busy, but you have to spend that time with yourself or she you won't get there. Mm -hmm. No, it's very true. Um, communities like NurseDeck, um, what resources do you think are the most beneficial for nurses that we can promote um, to help both nurses and nursing students? Hmm. What types of resources? Mm -hmm. Gosh, there's so many out here. I mean, it all depends on where the nurse is in their journey. So you could have an early season nurse or your early career nurse who really just needs help in their growth and their professional development. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. What's next for them? Um, I think it all depends. So from there, where do you find people who are supporting nurses in their professional development early on? That's a yeah. niche in itself. And then middle, the middle phase. Okay, well, how can I help my nurses grow into management, into leadership? What is mm -hmm. out there to help them, you know, take on a new role and transition mm -hmm. nicely? And shameless plug, I think coaching is a way. I mean, yeah, I don't think we use coaches enough in the um management and top tier levels. And it can really make a difference with those executives who are transitioning into different uh, roles so that they can acclimate very nicely. So that's um, an option. I think when it comes to the C-suite, then you have a set another set of goals. Like you really have to look at what's the exit plan? What do they want to mm -hmm. leave as their legacy? What do they want to be remembered as? Mm -hmm. And so you put things into place to establish that so that when it happens and you plan it out very nicely, I've helped with it exit planning as well, mm -hmm. that it's important to have that in place. And a lot of executives don't do that. <laughs> they just no. leave because they either met a goal or they didn't. Well, had it been planned out better, they could have really, really left some wonderful legacies behind. I just yeah. graduated one of my students. Um, congratulations to Lisa. She had been a nurse executive for 30 years and she found me on LinkedIn and said, I want more. I want to leave a legacy. How can you help me? And it was mm -hmm. us, we worked together for a whole year. Now she's an author, she's a speaker, she's gained yeah. two contracts um, to go back and help implement her own program. I helped her create that helps nurse, new nurse managers uh, transition into their role for that first year. Like she just found over their 30 years, that wow. particular year was so much more critical and unsupported than any other role in the nursing staff. Mm -hmm. I found it to be amazing. And now she has a whole slew of opportunities ahead of her. So just one yeah. example as to what nurses can do, depending on where they are in their career. Right. That's great. That, you know, that's such a good point. I think a big misconception is, you know, if you need a, a coach or a health coach or a wellness coach that maybe you're struggling in some areas, but successful people can use it to leverage themselves from where they are, even if they're doing, you know, well. Um, I think a lot of us just assume, oh, if you're doing well, you got a great job, you got a great career, like what more could you really want? But that, I'm so glad you just 
gave that example. That's such a good example of, of how a year can really change your life. Um, yeah. Even with someone yeah. that, that's already experiencing a, a high degree of success. So absolutely. She, she's on a whole other trajectory and having left what she did for nursing, but still leaving pieces of her, her knowledge and insight. Yeah. Like, it's so powerful. So her, her program is so powerful. So yeah, I think it's often overlooked. And again, what I have found with working with executives is that word of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Right. Not completely fulfilled. So it doesn't, that's why I'm, I mean, I have a master's degree, but I'm not big on accolades. I have two certifications and I encourage nurses to get their education. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I do think that a lot of it has to be inward work. Yeah. Do you find with the the whole concept of leaving a legacy, are nurses wanting to reach back down or back out um, to connect and kind of fill that mentor role? Like you said, she pursued um, writing a book and then, you know, becoming a speaker. I feel like that is, there's such a big connection piece there um, to get to reach back into the community uh, to motivate and inspire people, you know, rather than just going on your own career track, like, this is my goal, this is the next one, this is the next one. Um, I love that concept of, of legacy, as you say. Um, but it to me, I hear that it's about reaching back, reaching back. Um, it could be. It could be. Um, legacy is one of my brand words. So it's something I use a lot. So it's big for me. And that's probably why I'm talking so much. But yeah. this is so important to me. Like, this is why I do what I do. So if, yeah. you, want me, if you ever want to get me to talk, just say legacy, like squirrel. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll try to make this quick. It's because my, my why is my mother. I lost her at age 62. She had been a certified nurse's assistant for as long as I could remember. And she'd yeah. done one year of her registered nurse program, but never finished. Mm. And we would always joke about it. And she's like, I'm going to go back and finish. I'm not that old. And you're not, you know. And then she passed away. So I do this so that every nurse that I come in contact with, has the opportunity to meet their goal, to has an opportunity. I'm like, okay, I, I'm here. <laughs> you know, it's up to you to take it or not. Some don't see it, right. some do. And they jump on it and we get to work. But my why is, you know, leave your legacy, fulfill the dream. Nothing's too mm -hmm. hard for you. And you have all that you need. Like, I think yeah. we undervalue what we have. We have uh, so much to give. And I think yeah. healthcare as a whole belittles that sometimes and nurses don't feel empowered. But if they yeah. took the 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 oomph to look inside themselves they'd say that you know what i am crucial to this ecosystem i am critical and i belong here so i say that to say is that this legacy piece is so prominent to me and it was prominent for lisa but for some people it's not a big thing so i think we have to find their thing so some mm -hmm. of them it is you know some want to go to other countries and do things there some want to um develop something in their local community. It all depends on the person's passion and their purpose. Yeah. And we help them to unearth that. Yeah, great. Well, I can definitely, you just jumped alive for me right there. So I, I love legacy and, and it's such an interesting concept and I can see you're very passionate about it. Um, it's, yeah, very interesting to me. Yeah, I, I have it on a t-shirt. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Official. It's um, official. That's great. Um, I love the idea too of like nurse entrepreneurs and reinventing yourself. Um, as you say, nurses undervalue themselves. I a million percent agree with you on that. Um, how can nurses that have this maybe entrepreneurial bug but don't have the self confidence or awareness of what's out there? Um, how can they benefit from either using a platform like like we have with Nurse Deck or um, any supportive tools that you can offer? Yeah, woo. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're trying to like boil that down into a good quick yeah. for you. But um, again, it, it is all self-discovery. I just think we're too busy for our own good. We need to sit mm -hmm. down and find our purpose. So that's the first mm -hmm. step. And once I did, then I went on to write the book. Um, back in 2017, it's like my new Amazon, my, my bestseller on Amazon, but it's 
take 90 days to find your entrepreneurial passion as a nurse. And sometimes it just takes time is what I'm saying is that you have to give it some time, allow that time and space, but we're so busy or we don't give it enough time to develop, or we really don't dig deep enough to find what's truly like buried inside of us. So it takes one of those Mm -hmm. things to happen uh, Mm -hmm. for nurses to really kind of get ignited, it disignite the flame um, into entrepreneurship. But yeah, once they do, then it's definitely a different tra- trajectory for them. Uh, and mm-hmm. they see all the possibilities because it's just like we have so many certifications as nurses. It's just like that in entrepreneurial realm. Like it can be so many things to do that you can apply uh, your your knowledge to, but we have to find that particular thing. And then I, I serve okay. as, you know, the coach to help them see, okay, these are the things that I know about. Do you want to try any of these? Or we can really, what I do is take what they love and what they know and what they're experts mm-hmm. in and put that into a book, into a training program and teach them to speak on it publicly so they can get paid. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. I think I, you know, cause we're bombarded with so much like influencers and different content and I think there are some nurses out there, even though you're encouraged, like follow your passion or, you know, have a career that's driven by purpose, purpose driven lives. But what if you're on the inside being like, I don't know what my purpose is. (laughs) I don't know who to tell that to, but I think it's so, I love that you have a a step-by-step, it sounds like, um, system to kind of dig deep and, and follow, you know, whatever maybe you're curious about or, or little, um, flames that you can ignite, you know, into, into bigger flames. So I think that's, that's great. I know for, at least for myself, when I was at the bedside and then I, I left to, to start a family, I'm like, I still want to use my nursing role, but I don't know. what I mean, I'm at home, so how am I going to do that? So, mm-hmm. and I know a lot of nurses are in my same boat or are, are dreaming about it, but it's just, it can be hard knowing where to start. Even if you see other people doing what you might want to do, knowing the steps to get there. Um, so it sounds like you are someone, like you're a dot connector for people, um, which is such a great benefit. Yeah. Um, all right, well, one more big question. <laughs> what changes would you love to see in healthcare right now? Oh, huge question. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, it's tough because healthcare is slow. So I think if we had systems to speed up decisions and speed up trajectories or certain pathways for nurses to get on and either become innovators or entrepreneurs, um, Mm. leadership management is always going to be there. Communication. Like if we have pathways, just like we have the Mm. clinical pathway, I think there has to be a personal development pathway for nurses to speed up the trajectory for them. And it'll help them find themselves a little bit quicker than just job after job. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, that's that's great. I love that. The personal development pathway. I, that could be a t-shirt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> See, I just gave you a t-shirt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's very cool. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that just dropped out of nowhere. So take it and use it. I do think the you know, that makes it can make or break the future of nursing. Right. I mean, personal development, I feel like is is another side to the coin of self-care um working on yourself um will make you a better nurse in whatever role you're going to fulfill um i think that's amazing um tell me a little bit more i know this isn't on our our official question list but i'm just interested because i think it's so cool what you do um tell me how you went from like the the traditional roles of nursing into making the leap like how did you overcome I'm sure you had some fear about doing like, you know, taking a path that, that others haven't taken. Yeah. Well, I'll try to make this quick. This, my story was over the years, I noticed, I think one day I just noticed a pattern. Michelle, you were always either, you know, it started off as charge nurse in my very first year, then yeah. preceptor, then lead this manager of that. Then it went into coaching and motivational speaking, motivational interviewing. Um, yeah. Then population healthcare manager. My last job was in managed care, which I'm still certified in managed care. I love it. Yeah. And so that's when the light bulb came on. I was like, you know, you've always been the person just to always want to do more or help others get um, to a goal, a bigger goal. Yeah. And so 
long story short, I think that that was the first step is me seeing what I truly was good at and when people told me over the years or what I just yeah. noticed. Uh, I think if you look at that, like, what are you always excelling in? That's a clue. Okay. <laughs> it's a clue. Well, yeah. Tap into that, tap into that, dig into that. And so once I realized that, I started to take more classes, get, you know, more certifications and coaching to become a better coach. So I've mm -hmm. done it as well. Um, and then the very last, you know, thing that pushed me was a not so great thing that happened at um, my last job where there was a pilot program. Uh, I was an integral part of that team and we helped save uh, quite a bit of money uh, when it came, because with the Affordable Care Act had just come out around that time. Uh -huh. so there was a lot of changes and trying to get people the care that they needed and mm -hmm. appropriate mm -hmm. places, appropriate programs. So when I saw the amount of things that I was able to uh, produce, uh, from cost savings to new programming to going out and making relationships. I said, Michelle, you are just excelling. So why not do this for yourself? That was the first thought. And so mm -hmm. I could say the rest is history once I started really believing in myself. Um, and it just hit a point where I couldn't, I had to make the jump like inside. It was just mm -hmm. an inside side thing that said, go. Yeah. So, and yeah, I say that. five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> So somewhat of a, a leap of faith at some point, but like you said, all the signs pointed go for you to go in that direction. Yeah. That's, so that's I think you just, and that's all a part of you listening to yourself and just, yeah. again, finding your area of expertise and just digging and improving. So I was spending time for years taking courses and getting ready and I, cause I felt it, but I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> just like everybody right. else. But once you do that and just start developing it, it's going to happen. And you'll yeah. know, like, no one can tell you to do that. No one can tell you. Yeah. That. I never tell anyone to leave their job. Like you have to, that's your job. <laughs> yeah. So, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a thing where you finally get to the place where you know that you know that you know, and that's what I listen to. Yeah. I mean, I think at least for my understanding, wellness coaching and, and health coaching is a newer genre of nursing. Um, so it's exciting to be a pioneer in that field, which I feel like you totally are. Um, people that work with you, do you do like group things like webinars? Do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? Do you do kind of whatever the client needs or, or uh, how yeah, does it work? Well, I had to pivot a little bit because of COVID. So right now oh, what yeah. I do is I've developed, and I love Trump, you know, creating programs, uh, different types of wellness programming. So um, I work with organizations at this point because I've moved from, you know, helping people. And then before COVID, I was speaking and traveling and just teaching it. Mm. But now I have training programs so we can actually do that virtually. Um, yeah. Most of them have been virtual and we're actually teaching wellness in a different way um, virtually. So, you know, I think that it was the pivot that pushed me to do more training and mm. now opening up um opportunities for some of my really, really stellar students to do some training as well. So it's almost an agency model where we're doing mm -hmm. training um, in organizations that need either wellness, resilience, emotional intelligence, time management, mm -hmm. like really, I want to call them soft skills, but they're, they're more than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I love emotional intelligence. That's one of my favorite things to, to read about. And I feel one of the things that Gets, gets pushed to the wayside with nursing. And it's so important, um, not just for our patients, but for us working as a team um, between all the disciplines of the hospital or, or whatever organization you work in. Yeah, um, yeah that's, that's such a good point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna do some more webinars, but lately we've just been pitching organizations and being busy yeah. with that. But yeah, I do look to do, improve some more webinars, especially towards the end of the year. Cool. Awesome. Well, tell us the website. How do people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you? Sure. Thank you. Um, well, it's michellerodesonline.com. Okay. So try to make it easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they can find out about me, my coaching, some I mean, testimonials, and yeah. with the magazine or whatever they want to. There's all in that one hub. Great. That's awesome. We've done a few articles and blog posts about, you know, different careers that nurses can pursue besides bedside nursing. So I love that we are able to get someone with your expertise to kind of 
tell us exactly what it's like um, to, to work in those roles. And it sounds like the sky's the limit. It's super exciting. So, um, well, thank you so much. I'm out of questions. Um, mm -hmm. I love all the stuff that you said about legacy and really following your passions, personal development, um, and feeling empowered as a nurse, because as you said, nurses, we undervalue ourselves. Um, and I think we need to really take command of that if we want to get you know, respect from, from the outside. So Absolutely. I loved all the messages that you brought to our listeners and viewers today. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope you, you have a great rest of your afternoon. <laughs> you too. Thanks, Brianna. All righty. Thanks, Michelle.